Hey, it's Coach Manning, and you know what? I tried to wait. I tried to wait, but I got fired up today. It's day two. Freaking day two of training camp. Taking another step today, and I like what I saw today. Uh, just uh, uh, in training camp a few years ago, you know, Obviously, it's one of the toughest times of the year for football players because you're into those dog days, as they call them, and, and guys are out here again in the elements, and you, you got no school, you got nothing to do, you're just football all day. And so I just wanted to light a spark under our guys and uh, start doing videos and things like that. And News team, assemble! back and bigger than ever it's the unofficial 40 from soonerscoop.com now here's the entire sooner scoop crew carrie josh eddie and bob all right welcome back it is a momentous podcasting moment in history that's a terrible open i just ruined everything i just did shut up bob you're not on yet uh, welcome to the uh, Unofficial 40 bod- Podcast. Uh, Carrie Murdoch, along with uh, Eddie Radosovich, Bob Prisbillo, and Josh McQuishan. It's momentous because we actually have football going on. Uh, we've been out to practice maybe uh, more than we had liked lately, or at least certain times. Last night, oh, you had a, a night practice to kind of beat the heat. Uh, so we were out, uh, the early morning risers that we are, we were out a little bit later than our, our normal bedtimes. Uh, Bob doesn't have a bedtime because a kid decides what his bedtime is. They all blend in together. Uh, so welcome back to, uh, from the mountains, Josh McQuistian. We'll start off with you. Is my mic on? I mean, am I ready? <laughs> wow. I feel like half the time, I feel like half the time I talk and we are not prepared for me. Whoa. So, uh, Christ, no. What happened to you in the mountains? <laughs> Look at this entitled title in here. A lot of whiskey happened in the mountains. I can say that for sure. I'm always prepared for you. <laughs> you pissed off Eddie. Way to go. Uh, huh? Well, I'm not pissed. Okay. Eddie's, Eddie sounds good. What would I be mad about? That he's not cool. That's true. Carrie, you're like 0 I'm for a- 2 so far. and We're like <laughs> 2 minutes in. Shut this bitch down. <laughs> Canceling the podcast. So anyway, you know, we've got, uh, we actually have players that we've talked to, coaches that we've talked to. Camp is in full swing. Uh, stupid questions are in full swing because no one can tell you how the mentality is the defense has changed after three practices. Stop asking that question. That's my biggest pet peeve of camp. I'm so just far. glad that we got it cleared that Spencer Rattler can, in fact, spin it. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior! <laughs> if you, if you, you and Grant Calcaterra getting baptized together? Yeah, yeah, we did actually in the lakes of Minnetonka. Uh, I think we were all sleep deprived um, this morning. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean we're back at it. We're we're out there. We we talked to the offense last night. Uh, we've talked to 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 Lincoln Riley, who is the head coach of Oklahoma. I forgot his name there for a minute. Uh, a couple of times so far in camp. Uh, and really, I mean, what we've learned is just kind of, I think, guys, kind of how things have gone in the summer. Um, you know, guys that, you know, other guys were kind of impressed with uh, throughout summer workouts. And we've learned that there's still not a quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. Well, I mean, if you want to believe, if you want to believe that, I guess that Officially. you can believe that. Uh, I, I think that, you know, it's just as far as, early impressions go i think that you know i you do get a sense that there's a a new lease on life if you will uh defensively but we've heard that story time and time again haven't we just as far as uh they want to play well they want to you know do things differently they want to play better but uh we're not going to know anything until september one i i don't think that anybody is necessarily banking that they you know just because of the things that they say i don't think anybody's thinking uh this is going to be a top 25 defense by any means but you do get a sense that uh maybe there's a everybody on that side of the ball is taking a deep breath if you will and has gotten the bad 
thoughts out, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I get the way what I liked was Calvin. Basically, what I'm trying to say is they say, basically what the defense, what I thought they said is, we're f glad that guy's gone. Is basically how I how it what it boils down to. What I liked was Thibodeau admitting that the defensive line is doing something different. Because instead of you know before I think the last two years we heard like oh we're this close you know or uh, adjustment here or there to really getting it down and when Thibodeau just says flat out you know we blew it all up and we're doing things completely different. That's what readers have wanted to hear. That's what they've wanted to I feel like they've hear, heard hear. that before, though. I don't know. Usually it's like, you know, the, the mantra last year was, we're this close. You know, we're, we're not that far off. And then when you totally just change up everything, you're saying, yeah, we were that far off. Now we're figuring it out. It's kind, of like, I mean, it's kind of like what I said after the media day, though. I think I said this last week. It's like the, for the first time you can... Exhale and say, yeah, we've been terrible the last couple of years. Right. Let me ask you a question. Of all the, the problems on the OU defense, um, just like interior defensive line play, where has that ranked? Josh, we'll go with you. We'll let you speak. I, you know, word it for me again. Like I, I, of I, all I, the, you broke, you of broke all up the a little issues bit. that you have uh, as Oklahoma on defense over the last couple of years, where does interior defensive line play rank? It's not that high to me. Well, let's like, say, I mean, I mean it's all shit. I mean, we can start there. Yeah, it's all terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to make any excuses we're, for anybody. We're grading on a bad. curve. Yeah. We're grading on a curve. But when you say, what is the biggest pile of shit to the, you know, the, the type that doesn't stink as much, like, where does it all rank? I would think it's pretty low on the list to me. I mean, they've they've had steady guys. No difference. I mean, there hasn't been a difference maker in the middle since Gerald McCoy. But there have been steady guys. There have been good players. You look at corner. You look at safety. I mean, who's the last safety Oklahoma had that was meaningful? Tony Jefferson? Yes, you're exactly right. That's the exact guy. He didn't even get drafted. No. No. <laughs> Ironically, still playing in the NFL. Which still is a mystery still to me how he didn't get drafted. Well, I think there's probably rumors out there as well, far there's as certainly rumors that he got shit talked the by the OU coaching staff. But but I'm members glad, no, of the OU coaching staff. I'm glad that Former you members. you actually. I I wanted you to kind of say that because no one cares what I have to say about the defense. Let's be honest. But the thing is, is like people get so obsessed with. Uh, are they going to be able one gap, two gap? Are they going to be aggressive? Are they going to like the defense interior of the defensive line has not been the biggest issue. Like I you celebrate all you want that you've got it figured out. Calvin Thibodeau. I mean, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but like that is the last of my concerns with the defense in terms of what your gap scheme is on the D like, can you cover in the secondary? Do you have safeties? But that everything starts Do you have up linebackers? Front, everything yeah. starts up front. Well, with then talk about the edge rushers. Don't talk about the interior. Those guys have to make schedule. plays though in the middle, don't they? Are they not making plays? When was the last are time they, you had are they just horrible? When was the last time you saw a guy Thibodeau, break through the line and get That's a, not really their job. I mean, their job is Thibodeau's not to be saying. Gerald McCoy. That's what Thibodeau said. He said the last two years we just caught blocks. We're not doing that now. He's saying they're doing something. But you tell me different. what what defense is dominant because they have uh, an interior defensive linemen that are in the backfield every play disturbing the quarterback. I mean, Alabama can say that. How many other teams? Georgia had almost fewer sacks than Oklahoma did last year on defense. It didn't exactly derail their season. But it can lead to pass rushing. It can lead to corners not being on an island. But for their five biggest to seven problem seconds. is that they don't have any edge rushers. They don't have even a, an Eric Striker or an Okoronko Obanaya. Obanaya Okoronko. I'm so I'm so pissed <laughs> off. I, I reversed his name. <laughs> No, but if you're so... At least I said the whole damn thing. If, if you're looking to try to block Neville Gallimore or Leron Stokes or, or Dylan Fabmata'u, that might open the door for those edge rushers to be one-on-one -on -one and make some But let's some face plays. it, their edge rushers have sucked. I mean, they but haven't had anybody. You got Ronnie Perkins and Jalen Redmond now. I mean, this is... They, well, do they have Jalen Redmond? Because he's not in pads yet. They keep easing him in, which is sort of strange. They say there's no limitations... Yet yeah, the, he's he, limited. The easing him in, and he hasn't been out there full, uh, full go yet. Yes, he and physically he kind of looks like the same guy we saw in the spring that everybody 
freaked out about his photo. He's got a belly. Who? Jalen Redman. What? Yeah. I, I didn't see it Monday. I, I thought he looked a lot better. Did you? Yeah. But all I'm saying is, if it look, everybody gets so wrapped up in how they're, what type of front they're running, like on the defensive line, they have so many more problems than that. But the dominoes can fall because of the change. Because it'll, it can help. It, right. It's a part of it. It's, it's yeah. not going to fix it. I agree. Everything. It's a part of it. Yeah. I, I agree. And I'll, Bob's right. I mean, you can take some pressure off Parnell Motley. You can take some pressure off your young safeties. I mean, you can do some things. But, you're, but Kerry, you're also right that you've got to have guys like Ronnie Perkins and Jalen Redmond and Neville Gallimore winning one-on-one -on -one battles because you can't every time outnumber the blockers. You're, you're going to get killed doing that. So you've got to be able to have some guys that have the talent to beat a tackle on the corner, to beat a guard inside. You've got to do that on your own sometimes. And when you're not catching blocks, it's easier to do. Now, th again, that doesn't fix it all, but it's a part of – it's something you can wrap your head around, I guess would be the way to say it. Because what they were doing, it wasn't creating any pressure. I mean, it just yeah. wasn't. So – you, I, I, at least you're looking at, okay, we're going to give this a try and see what this looks like. Yeah, you could have an all-pro defensive back backfield. If they have to cover for eight seconds, it's not yeah. going to really work out for anybody. Yeah. Well, the Unless you've got Deion Sanders. The, the problem with OU's defense is it wasn't, Sanders. It, wasn't just eight, <laughs> it wasn't just eight seconds. I mean, it was uh, drop five-step drop, you know, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, guy beat the, the corner. I mean, that's... That's been OU's defense the last couple of years, whether it's Parnell Motley, uh, Trey Norwood against Oklahoma State. Throw whoever you want in there. And the theory was keep it in front of them, yet they would still get beat deep. So yeah. It, Play whole, eight, ten yards off the line of scrimmage, still get no beat sense. deep. Yep. And that's kind of like, you know, it's like the, the oh, they're going to play, you know, they're going to play up on the receivers now. They're going to, they're going to, they're, they're really going to jam the receivers at the line of scrimmage. That's great. It sounds fantastic. But if your corners suck, doesn't There's, matter. And they can't keep you from getting behind them at 8 to 10. How are they going to keep them from getting behind them when they're jamming the receiver? And if you they get thrown off right, right off the bat, then that jam doesn't do anything. You know how offenses, like, uh, I think Heupel maybe came out like the wishbone one time to like a, a tip of the cap to the previous regime or whatever. I think Grinch should come out and they should line up like 20 yards off the ball <laughs> as a tip of the cap to uh, the former Mike Stoops defense. Look, here's I, here's where I'm going with all this stuff. And people get so caught up in the minutia of, you know, gaps and schemes and all this stuff. And Josh can tell you this. It's just like offense. It's just like when Lincoln Riley came in here. It's like you could argue about what Josh Heupel was doing until you were, you know, blue in the face. When, when someone knows what they're doing and they come in, and and they put their stamp on something, and they develop, you know, and and they are the architect of something, and it works. You just you just know it. You don't have to. You know, all that other stuff will fall into place. Whether they're uh, playing seven yards off the line, whether they're jamming the receiver, whether they're you know in a one gap or a two gap scheme, uh, whether they've got a you know a Sam or a nickel, like all that stuff. It's just stuff to fight about while the defense sucks because. They don't have a, a, a head architect that, that really inspires confidence and knows what he's doing and gets players to play at a high level. That's, that's what it's all about. Like, I just don't think there's one thing that you, we can sit and argue on the, on the Crimson Corner all day long about. They should be doing this. They, they should be doing that. You know, oh, good. They said they're doing this. Like, it's, if it works, it's going to work, and it's all going to come together. This might be a pretty obvious statement, but I think just – from a baseline of anything that of everybody that we've talked to, I everybody is on the same page. Maybe is that probably the best way to put it? Just as far as Absolutely. what they're trying to do defensively, and it's like, like Buki said, it's simplified. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. It's Alex Grinch simplified. It's not Mike Stoops simplified. So their hands won't be up in the air five seconds before the snap. No, oh my God. Not knowing the call. <laughs> Who was that last year uh, against Texas? Ryan Jones. Yeah, that Ryan had, Jones. Just had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> Literally turned around, looking at the sideline with his hands in the air as the ball was being snapped. Not the best look. Not the best look. Which I, you know, when you saw that on film, I'm sure that's one of the things that got Mike Stoops fired. And Curtis Bolton was so confused he left the stadium. I mean, well, he tried to fight well, after Mike he Stoops. Beat, you know, yeah. tried to beat up Mike Stoops. Sure, <laughs> fucker. 
He did actually leave the stadium. I mean, that's... Technically, yes. <laughs> Technically, he stepped outside the locker room and took three steps, which means you left the stadium. <laughs> Instead of uh, replaying, like, 1975 whatever game, Sooner Sports should have made little segments where they sat down and made Alex Grinch watch defense from last year <laughs> as a, like a 30-minute like show. Buki in the West like Virginia game yeah. and, and Trey Norwood. That would have been ratings. That would have been a ratings bonanza. By the way, Trey Norwood, we should talk about that real quick. Uh, you know, he is he has been kind of penciled in as the starting nickelback. Everybody uh, keeps saying that. I I guess I was just the one, the only person in the world that thought Buki was the starting nickel. I guess the the, the logic I always follow is who gets brought to media day. Trey Norwood is there Friday. Buki isn't. That well, I mean, to me, me coming indicator. out of spring, that was. I don't yeah. think that's any. That means anything. Well, it gives me. Well, no, I mean that's something. I mean, I was just trust is. I've been talking about that since the spring. I mean, that's just what people have been telling me, is that he was going to be the star. He'd been moved. In, like if you ask Trey Norwood, he talked. I mean, openly about moving to Nickelback. Moving to Nickel, yeah. Yes. So you know, and he, because, you know, Buki is not really. I mean, we don't really know how good he's going to be or how he could be. I mean. I think that's still up in the air. No, I think that's fair. I just, I, but I think Trey Norwood. I mean, which is weird because, like Nickelback, you're replacing the Sam linebacker, so you think it's a physical position, but it's really not in this defense in, in, against you know Big Twelve offenses. It's not because obviously Trey Norwood is not a physical guy. No, Buki's not a physical guy because he's tried to be, and it's derailed his entire season. Uh, I was just to say, I think corner, he has the ability what? to. Trey Brown would be maybe the one guy you could say, okay, he's physical. And you guys know that I've always said, you know, if you're going to move a guy to safety, it was Trey, but you can't move him now because he's clearly your best corner. You need two of them. Yeah, you, I've said you need to split him. But your boy Parnell Motley's right there waiting to See, I'm, wait boy, to boy, just shut your mouth with your boy stuff, all right? He's been your guy. He's been your dude. I'm just it's saying okay. that he has never deserved just the outright Julian Wilson type <laughs> criticism that he's gotten during his career. He made that interception at Tech last year, by well, the way. Got screwed out right. of that. Julian Wilson had a good season in there. You're right. You're right. <laughs> they just, they just, he was able to hide for a season. How about that? Sorry, Julian. Before they really start, before Baylor exposed him. That was, I think, does that, that game feels like when everything turned. Like, oh, yeah. oh, it was, like, it was. It was the end of Mike Stoops. Yeah. That's that's what I wrote. Yeah, that's what Bob wrote on, uh, what was that, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. And which is, oh, uh, which is incredible. Me, Bob, I've been traveling. Yeah, thanks for reading, Josh. <laughs> uh, it, it, which is incredible considering that was four years ago, right? But that's where the fans turned. I, mean, I know, and we were right. living in this hellhole for four years. Yes, that's what they were. Or three and a half years, basically. Booing them at Owen Field. I'd never heard anything like it. Well, I, I was there for the Blake years. I don't go back to the Blake years. But, I mean, Blake, I love the like, Blake years. <laughs> Blake wasn't connected to the My guy childhood. that resurrected their program. Yeah, wow. no, that's true. He, Blake it wasn't, like, he, there wasn't a national championship he was responsible John for. John Blake's greatest yeah. contribution was hugging Stalker McDougal and giving Bob Stoops his players. Wink, wink. <laughs> um... So I'm easily derailed today. I got to be honest. It's obviously I'm not that sharp. No, it, this it's, morning. It, it's just one of those things. They're like, I, I think that we can, it's kind of like we've, t- we talk about in the mornings and I'm sure that you talk about it, Carrie. It's like, what, what can the, the this defense do to get better? It's like, I don't, we, you, you stop, covered every yeah. goddamn base. It's yeah. like, they're not, you're not going to know anything until September one. It's a fruitless and September discussion. September eighth and 12th and whatever days they have to play. I don't know the schedule, but. It's like, I don't either. It, well, I, I know the schedule, but it's the first. The seventh. The seventh. I'm pretty sure they play farther yeah. than four days apart. And the then 14th. seven days after that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, but <laughs> regardless, it, we're not going to know anything until we actually see these guys play. Am I stupid for believing in those old guys again? Chance Sylvie, Jordan Parker, Robert Barnes. Can those yes. guys I'm gonna actually say yes. do anything? I, I ah, absolutely say yes. Dang it. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't think that you can just flip the script and all of a sudden be able to play. Like I, to, there is a, a certain level of coaching that they're probably getting that they weren't. But at the same time, it's like I'd rather I'd almost. I, I mean, I've been erotic fantasizing about those pictures of Woody Washington, Carrie, that you took on. Uh, yeah, those will be up here. He, he is a specimen of a man. He looks good. Clever like, uh, captions included. Hmm. 
I'm gonna have to include something about Eddie getting wood at this point. I think. I mean, that's that's what you want a guy to look like, though. No, I in, mean, that's, in your in your defensive backfield, it's like he, you know, what's always sad is like Jordan Thomas had the perfect, you know, cornerback body, and he looked the part for about a year and a half, and then it just all fell Until apart. Until he got in the program yeah. longer and longer, because that's what happened with everybody. But long, lean. I mean, like Woody Washington is not, you know, as thick with two C's as Trey Brown, but he's closer than anybody else, and he's just a true freshman. Guys, I, I'm, I'm looking at the scholarship chart right now. I just, I, Bob's question got me thinking. Okay, of juniors and seniors that we've seen, I'm, I'm going to take LaRon Stokes out of the equation. Who would you buy into this year? Is Okay, I, I think this year they could be a positive player. I'd say Neville is obvious. Yes. Right. Kenneth Murray, you I You have to with Kenneth. I mean, you're forced yeah. to believe in Kenneth Murray because exactly. he's the preseason Big 12 defensive player of the year. Is it wrong? And Trey Brown. That's Trey all Brown. I have. Yes. I have. I have those three. There's nobody else in that group that I'm like, that's a difference maker. Is it wrong? What for about me to... Ronnie Perkins? He's, 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 not, not, a he's not a junior. He's not a junior. Oh, okay. I'm, talking about okay. Just, I'm talking about young guys. Yeah. Or, oh, sorry. Older guys. I, guys I want to buy into Chance Sylvie. I don't know what it is about him. I like the kid. He's a good dude. That's that's exactly he, it. He, he's a I'm fun like, interview. Here's the problem with Chance Sylvie is that run that Georgia had was to his side of the field that Sonny Michelle had that, that sealed up that game. Like that, for OU fans, that's when they gave up on Chance Sylvie, just like they gave up on Mike Stoops against Baylor in 2014 or whatever it was. Well, they have more reasons to give up on Mike Stoops than they do Chance Sylvie. That's not I'm just saying, that's, that's yeah, you're right. I mean, there was nobody on that side of the field. It was ridiculous. But just how many guys go through all the stuff he's had and come back and are meaningful? I know. It's, it's rare. It's a, it's a feel-good like story. story. Yeah, it's yep. a feel-good story, but it doesn't mean it's going to produce. Sure. I get it's it. the same way I feel about Nick Bass. You know what? Like, Here's the thing. Like, Chance Sylvie, great story. Would love to see redemption there. Uh, but if I had to put money on if I had to go to Vegas and bet on who was going to be a bigger factor, I'd, I'd definitely go with uh, Delarian Turner Yell and Jeremiah Cradell just because. Yeah. You know, the guy that's kind of gotten, I don't know, lost in the mix, but certainly a guy that I figured we would have talked to by now is Justin Broyles. Yeah. Like, didn't necessarily come to, he didn't come to media day. He, we haven't talked to him after, and we've only had one availability session, but um, I, I just kind Part of. Part of that's on us. If we're not requesting. No, that's, that's sure. But sure. we talked sure. to him in the spring, and he was very chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Like, well, that's just kind of how he is, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I just I don't know. I, but, you I, know, I it's hard to be, be a, that. It's it's it, it, you can be that way when you're Baker Mayfield, when all you do is talk and get into fights and pregame with the other team and then don't do anything. Like, yeah, you got to be able to back it up. Shut up. I mean, Josh, don't you think that? I don't know. I, I can't really remember what coming out of high school. I kind of thought he was going to be a player. Maybe I just have a soft spot for Oklahoma City kids that I want to see do well. Maybe that's my fault. Justin was a kid that I was torn about because I didn't think he was an elite athlete type of guy. But at the same time, you couldn't argue. All the guy did was make plays. He'd sure. go against good competition, and he was good at the Nike camp, Under Armour, all that stuff. And so, our, you know, in our Adidas camp, he shined there. So, I mean, there was always reason to think, okay, maybe he's one of those guys that's just a little better than the, you know, he's more than the sum of his parts. You know, Sounds it's like kinda, you're describing a white guy, black guy. It, uh, you know, like I, well, I, I can see the, how you a get white there. black guy. The knock on Broyles has always been his speed. Yeah, he doesn't yep. have. Well, top he, end he, speed. I can tell you, he ran a four eight forty when he first got to OU. That's, and he's not a big long guy that can kind right. of make up for it. So I mean, there, there's, you know, like Jamal Morris is not an elite guy, but he's so big that you're like, okay, maybe, maybe you can find a way to make that work. Um, but yeah, with, with Justin, it, it was I thought. Like I said, I thought maybe his attitude, because you're right, he's always kind of had a chip on his shoulder, but it was a, in a likable way. Yeah. You know, like, you're going to doubt me, but that's fine. Like, I'm okay with that. But I know it's, it's, it's there, but I'm going to ignore it. It's easy to be likable when you're having success. Sure. It's hard when you have that chip on your shoulder and you're not having success, and people have legitimate reason for doubting you. Absolutely. Then you're Absolutely. not so likable, because you're not friendly. I mean, you know, everyone I, that's talking to you doubts you. I think the world of Justin, but I mean, if you if you were going to say who are some guys that you think you know might not be around a year from now, he'd be on a list I'd consider. I mean, 
just because I think they want them. They, they they're looking for different types of guys. And if there's a guy in that secondary that I would say really doesn't fit the mold of what I think they're looking for, he'd be on a pretty short list. You know what's it's bizarre kind of about these young guys too that have come in here and not had success. It's like none of them will quit. Like Justin Broyles clearly had to sit out most of last season because of that concussion. Who was the who was it that he suffered it against in the end zone? And then he walked right in front of us. Yeah, I can't remember leaving was, the field, and he you could tell he didn't know where he was. Was it Texas? No, it was. No, it was, it a, was home a home game. game. Oh, it was, it was a home game because everybody was walking down there. It was. Uh, it would have been like late? Baylor or somebody like that. Because it was oh, later in the it season. It was later in the year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, I had it in my head it was early. But anyway, okay. it's like he wouldn't admit that he his season ended with a concussion. Just like Robert Barnes wouldn't admit that he had a concussion with Josh Jacobs. It's like... Well, that's a tough thing to admit. He he almost got murdered. Yes. He almost got murdered on a football field. Like he was like, oh, it was something else. I didn't get a concussion. I was like, I don't believe that for a second. Kansas State, maybe? It could have been Kansas yeah, State. Yeah, that sounds right. But it's just like... Like saying that you had a concussion is like the like the worst thing possible in football now it. because because like I guess they're afraid like if people count your concussions, then they're gonna know that your tire tread is worn out or something. It's weird. It is really weird the way the injuries are being handled. It just whatever. Well, it's just like with Caleb Kelly, they won't admit he had a torn ACL. And I bet they or Jordan Kelly. They're not. I don't know what Lincoln's going to say Friday about Trey Norwood, but I seriously doubt it'll be just flat out exactly what went down. Yeah, on Monday and how long he's out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if he tore his ACL, I think that they would say that. They didn't say it with Caleb Kelly and Jordan Kelly though. It said they lower said, body. Yeah, lower body, and they it's needed like, surgery what? and be out because they didn't tear months. their ACLs. <laughs> right? Eddie's a believer. <laughs> Eddie's a believer. So they had shattered shins or something? Maybe. Maybe. Todd, that sounds awful. Fibula, tibula. Shattered. Sh- I'd rather have a torn ACL than a shattered shin. Yeah. I'm kind of with Eddie on that. That uh, sounds Bone brutal. grows back a lot better than ligaments. Oh. Yeah, but just awful. the pain. Yeah. It's like little pieces of your shin. I had a broken there, arm and a terrible. torn rotator cuff. I would take the broken arm every day. I've never broken a bone. I broke my head open when I was a kid, and that's all I've got. Yeah, I've never broken a bone either. Have you been played by Bruce Willis in a movie? Uh, no, because I'm excellent in the water. I'm, um, you know, I'm borderline a dolphin. Is water so his weakness? Yes, water yep. was, yeah. Well, I mean, he fell in that pool. I haven't seen the glass thing. I haven't seen glass yet either, so dang it. Glass was I good. I don't want to know what happened in glass yet. I need to see no, Split so I can see glass, yes. and I haven't seen Split yet. Split? Wow, you're only I, two I like split. behind. Yeah. So... There's Are these the- movie references? What? <laughs> I, I knew no there would idea. be somebody out there would be like, "What the f are they I've talking?" I've never about? heard of anything that you guys are talking about. They're mo- they're M Night Shyamalan movies. Shyamalan, ah. Shyamalan. I don't think they show them. They don't show them on the social media. There, Eddie. So you know, I get it. <laughs> I don't watch movies. They're not I Instagram know. movies. I live in real I know. life. <laughs> so you don't have a subscription to Netflix or anything? No, I have Netflix. Okay. So what do you watch what on do you there? Use it for? Yeah, a uh, bunch QB of documentaries. One? Wow, that's deep. Okay. Office. Ah, TV shows. More documentaries though than anything. Some of the Netflix special uh, series are good. By the way, uh, congratulations, Eddie, on your latest video. Thank you. Bizarre. Bizarre, wasn't okay, it? Okay, I have a couple of questions because you asked me if I had a rotary phone. And when he tweeted, I was like, what does that mean? I'm glad that my I'm glad that my parents had it still. There's one in the garage. You know, that's not a rotary phone, though. Yeah, it is. Like this, do you think that this is a rotary phone? No. Okay. Okay. So it has the thing that you dial. Yes. You spin. Correct. Okay. But you don't show it. But you didn't show it. I know. It was tough because I was trying to kind of hurry because I knew I had to get down to Norman and then uh, or not get down to Norman. I went out to dinner last night, but because um, I had a bunch of buddies that were going to the OAR concert and I had to go for cover football, but that's not big of a deal. Uh, it <laughs> That's Friday, right, though? No, it was last no, night. Was, oh, OAR was last night? Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. No that's wonder why you were he, so he wanted to be compensated for the table. Exactly. That he didn't buy. That's not that, neither here nor there. I was going <laughs> to attend. I was going to participate. So you didn't end up going to the Jones after? No, it was over. It was over by then. Oh, oh that's right. It's Tuesday. Like 11.15 oh, we stuff got to out do. I had videos to get up for the board. 
uh, I just, it, it was tough shooting it by myself, though. So I had to just do different things. I noticed you do a cut in there. When yeah. You put, before you put the lipstick on. Yeah. By the way, where did the lipstick come from? My that parents' house. Really? Yeah. I'd run over there. When I got the phone, I went into uh, my parents how did your restroom. mom react when you said mom <laughs> I think I say, did some you lipstick? ask your mom or did you just take it and not alert her to the potential problem i just took it okay yeah i figured i'll take it back today though she liked the video you don't, don't want to explain it that video. To mom. it wasn't that big of a deal but no it, it was tough shooting it uh by myself but it actually it ended up working out because i i figured like the the worse the quality is like the production quality i think the is better. the better the, yeah. the show so shot uh, on an iphone no, I used the I used the tripod and stuff. Oh, you did! Yeah. <laughs> wow. <sighs> yeah, it was good. Thank no, you. I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. You think Baker What's will good see it? it now? I don't know. Like we need Jake Trotter to just ask. Do you want me to text or what am I talking anyway? Yeah, <laughs> right. Just ask Bob. <laughs> right here, Bob. You need to have you need to command Jake to. To ask Baker if he's seen Eddie's video. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. I'll just tweet him. <laughs> I'll tweet Jake. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm lying. All right. I'm not. I will ask. Okay. Well, then that's fine. <laughs> I'm sure he saw it. So um, I don't even know where we left. We, we, well, we got through the defensive side talk. We, I guess we could talk a little bit about the offense. Well, I tell you what, I did as... load up some audio. Okay. Um, Let's since do we audio have first. been talking uh, about, you know, and, and look, I'm not I'm not down on the defensive line when I'm talking about it. What I'm just saying is, you know, the, just the monumental arguing that goes on about the, the minutia of the defense, about every little thing that they're doing. Look, I think they're going to be. I think the biggest thing that the defense can do is get better players, which they have an entire. Let, let me ask you this though, real quick, before we get to the audio. Sure. Do you think though that if they play better defensively on the line, it will help everything else? Absolutely. Wouldn't that be a product of what they're doing, as far as one Absolutely. and two gap? Okay. Yes. Okay. I think that's where everybody. But I'm is just saying, you know, to spend so much time. But I guess that's what everybody that's does. That's what you do in the summer. That's what you do on the internet. I think it, um, I think it all like has people a... people on our message boards. That's a good I'm thing. not saying that, you know... <laughs> it all has a part, though, doesn't it? And I think that... But what I'm saying is... Play the audio. What haven't... I'm saying is, if Alex Grinch figures all that stuff out and it all plays together, it's, it's not about just one thing. Sure. It's about a whole lot of things that come together that the people that have been running this place... Haven't been able to do over the sure. last four or five but years. But public, I mean, not publicly, but from a from the fans' perspective, it will be because of that, right? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, if you, let's face it, if you played on the defensive line in high school and you're really good at arguing about the one gap versus the two gap scheme, then that will be the sole reason that the defense improved. They do have probably, I mean, they haven't had a Ronnie Perkins though, let's face in it, the last five years on, would, that, on that defensive line. Have I would. They? This is or Josh. somebody with that ability, Josh? Uh, damn it, you caught me distracted again. <laughs> Which means this is why, this is why we turn you off your goddamn microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Are your cleaning ladies there again? No, I was Linda? reading the board. I'm, I was looking. I promise, I was Linda? looking at the board. I was. He was Linda looking. He was here. looking at at Jackson Hole vacation photos. <laughs> no, guys, I haven't. Ex I haven't shared this yet. I, I put something on the board about it, but Linda, we. Uh, we, we, she Linda. cleaned to Is she Linda cleaned having your Tuesday. baby? No. Oh. She cleaned Tuesday. Not the Patrick we left Schwarzenegger Wednesday. situation. <laughs> we left Wednesday like first thing. We came back Monday and she was supposed to again clean Tuesday. And the house cleaned was cleaned out? out? The house is clean, so we're like, Linda, we don't need you. And I'm like, I really hope this is not gonna be super awkward. Like I kind of almost wish she would have come Tuesday so like I could see if like she's giving me the stink eye because again I don't know what she was processing of what I was saying but there's no question she heard me say her name so it, it's going to be awkward next Tuesday I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that at all you think but Scoop we're HD should come down Tuesday, there and where th there will be no sooner <laughs> scoop interactions on Tuesday that will not happen maybe Scoop HD should come down there and we'll uh, videotape it Eddie if you want to show up and potentially ruin Tiffany's beloved cleaning lady 
That's fine. And but miss Eddie practice. Looks, well, it's, e- <laughs> hey, it, it's either it's either I do it down there or Trump does it when he builds the wall and she has to go oh, back. God. Eddie, let's go down there uh, and dressed as uh, voodoo witch doctors. You can do this that. Is, oh, God. T- I'm, guys, I will remind you that Tiffany works in anesthesia. She can kill you with no one knowing. It's a scary thing to sleep next wow. to that person. Getting juiced up kind of sounds fun. All of a might, sudden, this is turning into be Breaking down Bad. There, I might be down there by I'm, 10 o'clock tonight, Josh. I'm, what are dude, the, I'm telling you, If you can dangerous. guarantee me an IV and maybe a little bit of a drip, I'll what be down those, there by 9. <laughs> what are those beans they were trying to kill everybody with in Breaking Bad? Lysin oh, beans? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, they were... Uh, Ricin? No, oh, it was... Uh, was it Ricin? I think it was Ricin. That sounds kind of right. Rice and poisoning. I need to go back and watch it. I haven't watched it in a while. I have never I think gone back and watched it. That's what they killed the lady it. with in her coffee, in her sugar packets. I think that's right. I think wow. that's right. We're having a good a discussion about something that was on television with Eddie Rodasovich. I watched. I watched Breaking Bad. I watched the that's big first. shows outside of Game of Thrones. Did you watch Lost? No, I could not stand the idea of Lost. <laughs> I, I'm with Eddie. I never got it lost. I couldn't get it. I loved it. I I'm, I'm so glad that I, I didn't it. either because at the end when everybody freaked Hated out it. about the, uh, the, ending, yeah. the finale, I was like, yes, that justified now, me. Does anyone here watch reality stuff? Do we have any reality TV watchers? Well, last chance you. Uh, By I'll, the way, I'll, okay, hate, okay. I'll hate watch a little bit of it. Did you guys watch Hard Knocks last night? I haven't watched it I yet. did. I did. How about that? Uh, a last chance you double offender. Ronald Olly. Ronald Olly. Oh, yeah. What did Olly do? He last chance you'd himself right out of an <laughs> right NFL job. <laughs> he just he just last chanced it. He just dropped the U. Have we, yeah. Have we <laughs> talked about? Like, yeah, we've talked yeah, about last we, chance you. Mm-hmm. That was just such a With Bobby Bruce episode. shit show yeah. of. A, I, I, yeah. I I got to season or episode three and I haven't continued because what I found out about last chance you is. I can't stand a second season in the same place. The same place. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too much. It's all predictable. I, and it is it becomes like, predictable because the producers realize, okay, this is what's gonna make the story. I think as opposed going, to yeah. just going there and figuring it Are out. Are they going to Iowa Western? I thought No, that's I, what I said would be a good no, one. I thought, oh, okay. I thought Iowa uh, Iowa Western was asked and their coach said there'd be no drama here. So I don't think they're ever gonna Yeah, they're probably too good of a <laughs> they're, program. They're a good <laughs> they're a good yeah. GECO program. No, they're looking yeah. for train wreck programs. Exactly. And that kinda eh. That's why I said I'm actually turn, supposed turn to go off. up there. Yeah, you are, aren't you? Go see Quincy. Yeah, I'm gonna go Yep. Uh I'm gonna go see Perry Allman free. Why did I say Quincy? I what was that? Quincy, Quincy Russell? Russell? Quincy Aver- <laughs> Are you Quincy Russelling us? I just blacked out for a second. I, I Roy Manning. Defensive tackles I America. Roy Manning. I blacked out for a minute. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Well, uh, here is uh, Alex Grinch uh, kind of talking about it. And this is what I love is, you know, the whole thing came out about, uh, was Joshua Eaton? That was a kid, right? Yes. Um, and, you know, uh, Definitely Lincoln Riley debates whether that was said or not. Um, and it was told to Sam Spiegelman, uh, or, you know, at the five-star challenge. So, you know, who knows? I mean, you're in that situation. It's it's a he said, he said situation. So, but I mean, there's no doubt. We've said it all along. Like, it wouldn't be surprising for Alex Grinch to say something like that because he's he's not afraid of, of like we pointed out, he he, he literally said, uh, I wanted to tattoo the number 129 on all my secondary guys, uh, you know, going in the season, and that's his way of joking. Which it's hard to tell. I mean, he just he's like I brought it up on the board. He when Jenny asked him about it, and he said he was kidding. Yeah, he gave off a very nope. <laughs> I'm not kidding, but I have to say that I'm kidding right now. Uh, well, this was kind of the, conclu- very the conclusion of it. So, like when you say no, I wouldn't do that, but I did do this. Did did uh, did workouts that that, that uh, you know from a rep count standpoint added up to 129? Uh, as a reminder, and and I think uh, you know again as as we as we flip the the page and the, and the calendar goes on to August, it's on to 2019, and so that 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 no longer will be the emphasis. But I I think it's just you know serves as a reminder um, that you know it. it uh, um, it, it, it's difficult to, to play defense in 2019. You know, you're one play away from being average. 
So, I mean, look, we've talked about we talked about the numbers last week, just how awful they are. Like everything's 118th, 129, 111th. I mean, just every team defensive category across the board was awful. And uh, <laughs> if you're going to the NCAA statistics page, you just have to click the last page. Go to the page go to, three. Go to seven. <laughs> three. Go, yeah, go to page, page three, three every three. time. Is it three? And there's <laughs> <Yep>. Oklahoma. <laughs> but, I mean, it was kind of interesting there because he was basically like, look, that was his way of saying, we're, gonna, we're not going to be talking about that anymore. We're going to move on. Kind of, I've made it aware all throughout the offseason. Now it's time to play this season. So I mean, it is like they, they are yeah. moving on. No, I you have to. I, I, I That would be the worst thing that they could do. And maybe what that's what they had done here over the last couple of years was just the fact that you tried to focus too much on what you did in the past and tried to fix it in a way, if that makes sense when you can't really necessarily fix the past. Yeah. Is that, I mean, I don't, I don't well, I mean, know if that Kerry makes Cooks sense. I did but. all the same stuff when he came in. Like, sure. He would start every meeting with like, it, well, it was 118 then or some, whatever, 124 or something like that. I mean, and it was like, we're wiping the slate clean. We're starting over. Like, and it didn't work. Like, so now it's up to, Al- and Alex Grinch, I mean, being the defensive backs coach along with Roy Manning, like a lot of it's on his shoulders. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, they certainly... I, I wouldn't want to disappoint him. They, they have their work cut out for him. Even Good being luck. being a grown man, I would not want to... Good he's luck. one man I would not want to disappoint. Who, Manning or Grinch? Grinch. Gr- like, don't ask a bad question to Oof. Grinch. Yeah, that- he makes me raise my game when I'm asking <laughs> questions to him. He's just... it's not. I mean, there's just certain guys that are intimidating, and he's got it. So, I look, the one thing that could help this defense that could be a quick fix besides just schemes and everything else is just better players. And it was interesting kind of what Alex Grinch had to say just about, especially the pass rushing position, because uh, you've got a David uh, Guaybu coming in, a Joseph Wete. I don't know who else am I thinking of Josh that could be, or Bob, you know, that could maybe push at the pass rush position or, or give them a rush. I mean, LeBron uh, uh, Stokes, I guess, from I the interior a little bit, maybe. Stripling will. I'm not, I don't think Stripling will be that guy. Yeah, Stripling better, would be the only guy. Maybe. Better than Isaiah guy. Thomas. Now, Isaiah that's a guy be nice. because Tibbs, Tibbs uh, talked him up a little bit. Him but a little bit. It, it, it's kind of funny. It's like both of those guys, him and, you know, I, not necessarily the same position, but Levi Draper, it seems like two. those are both in-state kids that you just want to see do well. Mm-hmm. At least I do. Yeah. And, you know, I remember going up to both of their U.S. Army things. Uh, those are guys that are talented high school football players. And you look at it, you kind of look up, and you forget about them here over the last couple of years. They're still only redshirt sophomores, right? And like, they're still relatively young, I guess, yeah. is what well, I'm trying get, to say. That's the borderline, right? Your third year in the program. Yeah, if, you got to... If you haven't done sure. anything now. No, I, I completely agree, Bob. Right? Then you're you, good. Well, it's, if you it's haven't put done up, anything it's now, put up or shut up time. And here's the thing: you've kind of had a luxury to be one of those players in the past. You're going to get recruited over now with this staff in place, with the way sure. Lincoln's recruiting, with Alex Grinch. Sure. Even if it's not a four and a five star, you're going to get recruited over, and you're going to get given up on because they, you weren't their guy. I mean, that's just the way it happens. So Alex Grinch did talk a little bit about you know the hope to uh, provide some competition with some of the young guys, especially at the rush in. You, you eliminate the survival element in practice, where it's okay just to survive a given a given drill, a, a given uh, you know a seven on seven period, an eleven on eleven period, and 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 why can't you survive it? Because you're not performing up to a certain level. There's another guy we can bring in for you, and then a legitimate guy that we can bring in for you. You know, there, there's there's shot fakes in basketball, where there's head fakes in, in football too. Is when you take a guy out and you put someone in that he knows and you know is not capable of. of executing at a given level, um, then then it's not true competition that way. And so I think that's good. And Eddie, I think you were the one, you kind of posted that. That was one of the first things you posted from the press conference yeah, I on thought it was Friday. A, like, it was a great, that stood out to you. It was a great comment just as far as just because somebody's listed at second string or second on the depth chart doesn't mean that you can put them out there and have the same confidence that you have in that starter. Because like you get your ass chewed out, you go over on the sideline, you're pissed off at your coach, the next guy that goes in is a walk-on, and he gets blown up on the play, and you're just sitting there laughing your ass off because you know who your the coach fir- looks stupid. Unfortunately, you know, you know what the first name that popped into my mind when he was talking about that? Hold on. I just kept thinking, oh, poor this guy. Man. I um, was in school. Oh, you're talking former player. Yeah. 
hit me with it. Brandon Crow. Like, wow. when he came back in in the Texas game when Ryan Reynolds got hurt, I was yeah. thinking, like, that is a perfect example of you take somebody off, you take a starter out, and you throw somebody in there, and just because he's second string doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be able to live up to the billing of what you need from a second string or a starter. See, I mean, to me, I look at it more like just guys that... He, okay, here's a good example. How about a guy like PJ and Banasaur? Like, you know that guy had a lot of talent. Yeah. But he was kind of a knucklehead. Uh, the coaches couldn't get through to him. And he knew there wasn't a whole lot of depth in the program. So there wasn't a lot of urgency for him to really play better because he probably thought as he was going through practice, like, I'm I'm doing just as good as this other guy. Why is he yelling at me yeah, all the I'm, time? I'm Kush. What, what, are the, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. I, I would go the same way with Jordan Thomas in 2017. Yeah. When Trey Brown, Trey Norwood were true fresh. He knew mm-hmm. he didn't have to do anything. Yeah. He just had to not be injured, and he was going to have to play. Yeah. It, 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 you're at least getting the feeling that they're trying to build something. I don't know if maybe it, maybe it's just because it's new and that it's a, it's new voices that you're hearing talk. But you know, I I think there was a sense over the last couple of years that you didn't they were doing more of a fix on the scene than a try to build a defense. Is that it was is that it was like it was portrayal? like it was like driving your car across country and. Uh, trying to piece it together as it was falling apart sure. to keep it on the road. Yeah, like going from each uh, Firestone to Firestone, like, I need to fix this, or I need to add this. Okay, it needs an alternator. Yeah. Let's fix that. Okay, well, we need a new clutch. I need a new transmission. When in hindsight, you should have just bought a new goddamn car 700 miles ago. And that's basically what you did, right? Well, Bob did drive that effing Saturn for 20 years. 2003 Saturn. My God, what a piece of <laughs> shit that thing was. <laughs> Ouch. I, I mean, am I wrong? Unnecessary shot. Just glad we finally paid you enough to get a new car. <laughs> now it's Eddie's car. That he's got to get fixed. Watch it. Watch it. His car His car takes you guys a lot of places. I'll I just say it, that. It's, it's yeah, got to get all fixed. The, all of a sudden, that passenger <laughs> door is not going to open, Bob. <laughs> I'll see you in Dallas. <laughs> no. We're going to get that fixed at some point. So, yeah, but no, it it there is a urgency in competing that guys like Woody Washington are going to bring. Guys like Parnell Motley or Jaden Davis or Jeremiah Cradell. Uh, you know, it, and I think even a guy like Patrick Fields is is starting to step up and, you know, making a guy sure. like Robert Barnes yeah. really. I mean, like we talked to Robert Barnes the other day. I didn't really get a big sense of urgency from him, like you know, his his job was on the line. And you sort of, sort of need it, you yeah. Know, it was the way that he's been always injured for periods of time, and when you've got guys that look hungry, like the the way Patrick Fields talks is how you want your starter. Yes, to talk. yeah. I wish accountable. I, I mean, and I wish that I could sit here and say that you know this guy's going to start and this guy's going to, uh, you know. I, I wish I could sit here and give you a 22-guy ba- uh, depth chart for the defense. I, it's just not going to happen, though, in the first week of practice. Well, you know I be- I, who I believe in because of the way they talk? Who I probably don't have a reason to believe in after last year? Buki? Buki. Yeah, he's tremendous. Like, he is accountable. Right he understands yeah. what, you know, he's not a moron. He's not a knucklehead. Yeah. He's not, He's not. you know, deferring blame to other things. Like, I think there are too many players in this program, in the secondary in particular, like when you talk to them, they're just deferring any and all, you know, blame for past performance to something else, something that's not even there. I mean, is it because they like can't? they're defensive when you talk to them. it's like if you bring up, well, you know, you had a rough year, they get defensive. They're like, I didn't have a rough year. It's like kind of coincides with Broyles. That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Do you think it's because they there there and is I thought not Barnes a, was kind of that way when we talked to him the other day. Is it because there isn't a scapegoat down there anymore? As far as you could just kind of blame the coaches in a roundabout way? I, I'll tell you what it is. I think it is a disguising uh or a confusion over what is confidence and what is reality. Yeah. Like if I just pretend like I'm not as sucky as I am, then that my confidence will build. No, that's not how it works. You don't you don't get better by thinking positively. I don't know, we're getting really deep. <laughs> I like it. Sorry, Josh. 
I was just here for the ride, guys. I mean, I was enjoying all the Josh is just thoughts. like, stop talking about the mind games. I want to hear about hips. Can we, I mean, is that, are, are we there in the pod now? We can <laughs> talk hips. We reached that point. If we want to talk we're about. We're working our way down the body. If we want to talk about who has better fluidity between Woody Washington and Pardell Motley, go. I am your guy. Um, you're going to make me give credit to Parnell Motley, and that just upsets me, and I don't want to do that. So uh, let's come up with another comparison. See, I think you're more anti Parnell Motley than I am pro Parnell Motley. I think that's what that, we're figuring out here. I think that's fair. I, I just, at some point, you're like, even got, Neville Gallimore has played in the system he's played in. We've seen Neville Gallimore make good plays. We've never been like, he's a huge problem. I, Part of Motley, like, you can list off a couple of plays, but by and large, if you saw him, things were going badly. He's the only one that that could catch the ball. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's I don't know true. what that's saying, but he was hey, the that's one not who fair. catch it. Trey Brown caught plenty of balls against Oklahoma State. He just didn't get credit for Yeah, they for just any. kept having to redo it. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, I mean, that's not on him. Well, did, wouldn't it, didn't Trey Norwood deflect that into Trey Brown's hand, or was it the other way around at other the end way. of the Texas game? It was Trey Norwood getting the pick Okay, against Texas. So, Trey Norwood, boom. But now he's hurt. Yeah. So, I mean, do we all just assume Buki takes that spot now at nickel if that's if it's serious and Norwood's that's out? That's the assumption. That'd, yeah. Unless okay. unless they, you know, and I, I I admitted this already today, but you know, I went out there last night knowing that they were practicing, took the binoculars, hid behind the Channel 9 truck and snuck out just to kind of catch a glimpse to make sure that Trey that uh Trey Norwood wasn't practicing. And then I saw him with crutches. And I, it seemed like they had – I couldn't really tell the defense. It was so far away. It seemed like they had Patrick Fields kind of down at the line of scrimmage. Like maybe they were trying him at nickel a little bit because I didn't see Buki on the field with him. So maybe that's a possibility too. That's interesting. That would be a totally different type of player. I mean, I could see what they're thinking because he's a little more useful in the box than Norwood would be. Right, yeah, for sure. Um. But we were talking about this the other day too. Like set. Patrick Fields, like if you, if he was like standing at a, you know, like at a fence, and you only saw the top part of his head from the neck up, you would think that he was a monster. He has a he has the most athletic head. It's ridiculous. So are you officially on board? He's got a I mean, giant you're telling beard. Us? He's kind of got an Ed Reed thing going on. He inspires on facially. a lot of confidence the more you talk to him. But he again, does. And, and that is what we've talked about before. Is that faking it because you're not there yet? Or is it because it's legit because he actually has a reason to to be this way? Union kids, I think, man. I think he just has that quality. Of, like, he's a he's a leader. He's a general. Of, you know, like, yeah. Like, he's... You know, he's not the most talented guy in that room, but he's the kind of guy that, I mean, and Bob, you dealt with him a lot too. He's, he's going to, like, you respect him. Like, even yes. as a kid, you were like, that's a, that's a good kid. Like, I, I like what he's about. Um, and it's not always something you can put your finger on. It's not like, oh, he's funny or always, oh, you know, great quote. Like, he's just a solid guy to talk to. You felt like you were getting straight answers from him. Okay. A couple more things I want to play here. Uh, we talked about, uh, Patrick Fields, but also Trey Brown, guys. I thought he's an accountable guy. Like he is, he is bought into it. And you kind of, you know, wondered sometimes because you didn't see a whole lot of him on Twitter. Maybe that's why he's the guy that he is. He doesn't really, he doesn't dig Twitter all that much. Or and there was something about him being in his feelings about it, you know, eating right or gaining weight or something. And everybody's yes. like weird. Yep. Uh, but here is Trey Brown at Media Days. You guys talking to him? At first, it's tough, you right. know. But then you gotta you gotta snap in like, yo, this is life, regardless. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have you know you're gonna have problems inside of football and outside of football. It's like this is much like a, a learning experience. Experience, you know what I'm saying? This is also to teach you how to be a man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you can't take coaching, then it's gonna be a tough it's gonna be a tough life for you going forward after this world. So it's like it feels pretty good for him to like tell you the bad. And he was talking about Alex Grinch there and adjusting to him, um, you know, versus former coaches. But yet again, that's another guy that seems to get it. Like, there are some guys that don't. And Trey Brown's made plays. He seems to get it. He doesn't really blame anything else for he didn't, you know, he didn't make excuses when his mother died last yeah, October. At TCU. But now you feel like. I don't want to say he's accepted and moved on, but he understands, okay, this is what I got to do when I'm out on the field. 
Uh, and then one last thing, here's Lincoln Riley on Media Day just talking about his thoughts on the defense. I can see it heading the direction we want it to head. You know, I like, I like the way we practice. I like the way we run to the ball. I, um, the, 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 the intensity and coaching, the intensity and preparation right now is really good. So, And you can, you can see, again, that kind of like we said schematically, you can tell the mentality is a little further along than it was in spring. And again, by it, no means is it there, but it's, it's, it's progressed. It progressed through spring. Today would give a positive indication that it's impre- that's uh, progressed through summer, and so we've just got to keep building. How do? You- and that that was actually for the first day of practice. So it kind of goes back to what I said before. My biggest pet peeve is, have you noticed the mentality of the defense change? And Eddie's right. We got to wait till. They play, and you said, "Yeah, I mean, Houston." I'm even saying like UCLA. They're they're talking great right now, but, but we've been through this multiple multiple times here over the last couple of years. Just as far as uh, it sounds great, and even through the first couple of games, it looks great. It did last and then, year, and then you and then shit hits the fan, and you're like, "Oh God, they're 129th ranked in the country I right mean, now, you, and, and they're a mess." Yeah, yeah, you and you can't stop any. Really, it was Iowa State, wasn't it, yeah, on the road you, where it just all fell look apart? What they did Florida his, uh, Atlantic, UCLA. They look good. What was yeah. that guy's name? Zeb uh, Zeb Nolan. Zeb Nolan Zeb tore Nolan. a new one. Threw him through <laughs> 300 plus well, yards. Well, he knew. Just throw it to Keith Butler. Yeah, and you're you're gold. Boy. So yeah, it's a good thing that OU's returning a bunch of starters, but is it? So yeah, I mean. It's been there's been a lot of defensive stuff, but like you said, you kind of hit a brick wall there because the storylines that you can write about defense are kind of they hit a brick wall. It's like you can only go so far. Like in the the question is, is the defense going to be any better? <laughs> there's no answer to that question until they hit the field. But offensively, when you talk to everyone, you can get into so much more stuff when you're talking to, to players, uh, whether it's Jalen Hurts. Whether it's Spencer Rattler, C.D. Lamb, kind of taking it to the next level, uh, the five-star receivers that are all in, uh, other guys that are stepping up, you know, running back. I mean, the, the whole Kennedy Brooks saga is over now. Um, like someone was asking me today, and I mean, if you've kind of seen what's going on with Kennedy Brooks and you're 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 unclear about what his status is or anything like that, his status is that he's a football player at the University of Oklahoma, that he's been cleared by the Title Nine hearing uh, board uh, and that unless something comes out criminally, unless you know his accuser decides to file criminal charges, there's nothing else to talk about with Kennedy Brooks. So no, the reason, he's good to go. I think Kersey put it out there. Uh, the reason he hasn't been practicing is a tweak groin injury. So it's not anything from the university. It's nothing from uh, the They're Norman They're not waiting for Police the other shooter to drop. Yeah. Right. It, it's strictly a football... I don't even want to call it an injury. It's just a, it's the third day of practice. Yeah. Let's, let's put you out for a second. And he's one of our best running backs. Kind of like, You're gonna we be don't fine. need Zeke Elliott in camp right now. We'll just, you know, we'll worry about that contract stuff. And we don't really care that he's not here because he wouldn't be doing anything anyway. Sure. Uh, I I guess there's two ways to go with this. I, I think just as far as the offense, uh, it is pretty clear that, and I, I said it on the podcast maybe during July, maybe. I think Creed Humphrey's the most important player on that offense, mm-hmm. just as far as what he, I mean, we heard Adrian Ely talk about Creed last night. Bob, you talked to R.J. Proctor, uh, just as far as, I mean, Creed Humphrey is the king of that offensive line. Every He makes almost everything seem okay despite losing four starters. The other part of it is I'm just, I, I couldn't be more impressed with the way that C.D. Lamb is uh, carried himself through the interview process, uh, through the times that we've talked to him, through what he said about the younger guys and mentoring them. Uh, it's just, it's very, I don't want to say unique, but it, it's its its pretty cool to see him and his development and maturation, I guess. It's another guy that gets it. Yeah, here is, uh, he definitely gets it. Here's a little C.D. Lamb, um, and I'm kind of working on a story uh, on him right now, um, but... You know, I, I went through and looked at his stats just historically where he was. He had the best sophomore season in the history of OU football. Like, there's not another, not even Ryan Broyles had, Ryan Broyles had more catches, but in terms of yardage and yards per play, 
Like, there's nobody that really touches him. If he didn't screw up his shoulder against Iowa State as a freshman, yeah, that the really, freshman numbers would have been Like, insane. he has seven 100-yard games in his career. Five of them came as a sophomore. Well, those, two, only two of them came as a freshman because of that injury. I think you mentioned it last night. To, to CD was the fact that the way that he ended the season with the 176 against 167. Texas. 167. Or 167 again in Which the Big 12 championship high. game. And then what he did to Alabama. That might be two of the better back-to-back performances OU's seen out of a wide receiver. And that's why I think unanimously, I think we all agree that he could end up being the best wide receiver that's ever played here. And here's CD talking about that finish and his start to this year. You you finished really strong last year. You had 167 against Texas. That was your career high. Right. And then you had the Alabama game. How much confidence you know do you bring into this season off the way last season finished? Uh, I just got to keep it rolling, man. That's, 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 that's my motto going into the season. Just keep it rolling. Uh, like you said, uh, just coming off a great season, or if you will, just a good season in my part. Um, I can always work on what I've done that I haven't done correctly. So just critique my game, look at the film, just watch film, um, see what I don't like, and fix it. And, you know, part of kind of what I'm writing about with CD is what happened on Media Day, which he had a table like everybody else, and he sat there for 30 minutes and answered questions. And after that was over, they all heard him down to do autograph sessions with the fans. Well, all the players started leaving, and CD came back after everybody was gone because he wanted to get the stupid little placard that had his name on it and OU on it uh, that they made like on a regular piece of paper on an office printer, just like an inkjet printer. But he like that was important to him. Like he wanted, like he thought that was cool. He wanted to have that. Uh, it, and it just to me, it really shows how humble that kid really is I to care he- about something that. You know, weird. He had to go nuts about the big twelve media days one. Then, yeah, that's an official one. I think, I think he sold them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just signals it's his last year right there. Anyway, I tell you, uh, this is his last year. I don't. Yeah, he can tell no. you everything he wants to about chasing a degree. <laughs> that kid's gonna be making millions of dollars this time next just shit year. Just shit on my story, then that's fine. Well, it's, well, I'm just. It's not gonna. No, happen. I know it's not gonna happen. I'm not that dumb. What's weird is is how is he gonna be looked at in terms of you know greatest receivers because his numbers aren't gonna come. They're not he, gonna be there. Ryan Broyles, he's not gonna pass Ryan Broyles. Right, because he's only gonna be three seasons, yeah. and the freshman year was cut in half. So Even if he plays have. four years, it, he would really struggle. Not struggle, but it would be a fight to the finish for him to pass Ryan Broyles. Just because he had he had the actual NCAA record at one time uh, when he was at Oklahoma, I think it's I can't remember who surpassed it, but you look at his numbers though, and historically he'll he's already I think number ten all time in pass receiving yardage. So, but he could pass Mark Clayton. He could pass uh, um, Mark Clayton. Kenny Stills. By the way, is a guy that he said that he's been watching a lot of here yeah, over the last really couple cool weeks. Really cool to kind of hear about that, uh, but. I mean, the one thing about CD2 is, you know, he is humble, but he's not afraid, you know, to listen to his coaches or to be coach, which, you know, as we know, is a problem with some guys who aren't even any good or could be a lot better. Have you noticed maybe how more demanding Coach Simmons or Coach Riley have gotten of you, you know, that maybe they expect even more out of you? Uh, not necessarily because I like being coached hard. If a coach, I've been told if a coach don't yell at you, they don't care, so... Uh, with that being said, man, guys like that 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 keeps that stay on me tough, uh, critique me very much. I'm 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 happy for it. Like I need it. Uh, I don't like being let off the hook. I don't like being so short. You know. So, like like you said, um, just being in just being in that role, I feel like you got to take pride in that. Which I mean, the guy's already one of the best in college football, and he's saying, "I want you to coach me harder." And that's how you paved the way for Trajan, Jaden, and Theo. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how you do it. This probably isn't much of a surprise to you, is it, Josh? Just as far as your interactions with him, uh, I know that you were down at Richmond a couple times during his senior year, but it just, I don't know, I, I don't think we should be surprised by it, but it's unique in a sense that it doesn't happen every, I guess what I'm trying to say is we should appreciate it because it doesn't happen every time that you see a kid this special or this talented. You mean the fact that he wants to be pushed and that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, and just... Because I don't think like guys like Kenny Stills were like that. That he just gets it. And Kenny gets it, but it's yeah. it's a different level, I think. It's a different... Yeah. Maybe I'm being a little harsh. I mean, Kenny did... You know, he came from a 
family's dad pushed him really hard. So. Yeah, Kenny might be a, a bad example. I it, it's just I I, think I know Ryan unique. Broyles didn't got didn't like getting yelled at for celebrating on the way to the end zone when OU was getting their asses kicked by Texas Tech. I was in out in the parking lot in Lubbock uh, getting served by underage uh, <laughs> pledges. I left that game at the beginning of the second quarter. Uh, but no, I mean Eddie, it's what's interesting about it is. I think he's come to that because I, I, and I think it was always there. And when I saw him in high school, I mean, I remember talking to you guys about it, probably even on the pod we were talking about it, was there was this feeling that at times he looked a little, I mean, lazy is not the right word, but just kind of like checked out. Like at this times you're like, eh. Yeah. And it was one of those things. And I, and I talk about it with guys all the time. I, I talked about it with Marcus Stripling as uh, another really good example. Okay. Is he? Is it the fact that he doesn't have a challenge? Does he need somebody to push him? You know, does he need to be playing against elite competition, and that's going to make him better? Or is he a guy that when it gets tough, he's going to fold out of it? You know, I, I you don't know how that's going to go. But looking back at CD, you know, the talent was always just enormous. Um, but at the same time, you just weren't sure how he was going to react. And clearly, I mean, you know, and you knew it from what? Yeah, we did lose Josh. Doesn't happen very often. That was interesting. All right, so uh, we have had some technical issues, and uh, we will not be bringing... Well, I I guess I shouldn't have played it like that. I should have played it like uh, Bob decided to kick Josh off the podcast. You're out. But uh, somehow Cox is... I'm worried about the longevity of uh, the, the company. If, if our internet can't stay up. If our internet up. can't stay up, yes. We do not... We have redundant power. Everything is on a now on a... In uninterruptible power supply. We don't have redundant internet, though. I'm not paying for that crap. Not great. Not great. AT&T, you want to bring fiber here, though. Sooner Scoop might be willing to switch after this debacle today. Which is weird, because not only does my internet not work, but my phone line doesn't work now, but my TV does work. So I can watch pizza dough competitions on the Ocho, which is going on right now. But our uh, I, I can't even tell you where we left off. I know it was C.D. Lamb. Was CD Josh Lamb was talking. Oriented. I basically oh, talked about to, what a kind of kid he was in about, high school. Yeah, and about C.D. And that is kind of because I do remember him being a little bit. I mean, obviously he decommitted from OU, yeah. and then you know was kind of wishy washy there for a little bit. In his you know who the person that immediately came to my mind when he was talking about a guy that needed to be pushed and then was finally pushed, but kind of reminded me, and it's the opposite of what we've seen with C.D. is Ron Tatum. Yeah, just as far as name like he's a guy that you knew needed to be pushed, and then when he was pushed, he never pushed back or gave that equal opportunity to uh, give himself a chance. So that is, uh, I don't know. It's it's it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, I guess, not situation, but it's an interesting uh, circumstance, I guess. But yeah, uh, you just don't know what's going to happen when those guys get there. I think the number one example I would point to you gotta meet is, him. You is gotta Oboe. Meet. Is Oboe. He yeah, was he, the, the biggest yeah, knucklehead yeah. ever. Yeah, you, you got to meet him halfway. His first two years, you thought he was going to flame out. Yeah. You got to meet those coaches halfway. And he turned out to be one of but the, you, the but, best representatives of the program. But you know what happened? It wasn't that the coaches changed. It was that Oboe he changed. changed. Exactly. Like he became more mature. Exactly. Which I think, you know, it's, it's weird to say, but I mean, we're trying to figure out all this stuff on the defense, and I ripped on people for getting too involved in the minutia, and then we go total Dr. Phil on everybody. But really, like you're right, Eddie. I mean, it, it everything matters. It yep. all comes together. Everything matters. Um, that doesn't mean I want to read your dissertation on you know, two-gap schemes or one-gap schemes. I don't. Um, but really, I mean, like with these kids, it's like you just want to shake them and say, look, this is on you, yeah. whether you succeed or, or fail. Like, I don't care about the chip on your shoulder. Like, I don't care about, um, you know. Just because you have a chip on the shoulder doesn't mean that your you're all of a sudden going to. Your staff and that, we're, you know, I'm not on your team and, you know, that I'm against you or I'm either with you or against yeah. Like, all that crap. And I, I don't know if that's all built out of, you know, the handlers and the seven-on-seven seven stuff and all that crap that comes around. I think but a little bit of it is. But the entitlement or whatever you want to call it, it's like, I think what we're learning is the people that actually say, this is on me, that's up to me whether I succeed or fail, and the coaches are only trying to make me better, like, those are the people we're seeing have success. It's like those cliche lines of, you only get what you put in, or you only get out of it what you put in kind of thing. 
And you know who I think is Bob, who is a similar, you, you talk about oboe. It's not as severe, but I think someone that hasn't truly bought in that we're going to find out if they're bought in or not is Neville. Neville Gallimore. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. But hey. he's shown at least flashes. I mean, it just hasn't been consistency. Yeah. And that's what he has to find. But it's like, you know, playing through yeah. pain versus you know, injury. I mean, oh, no, there, there's I mean, been a lot of people. You can go back to unofficial 40s and even some postgame podcasts last year that I I think I did it. I questioned if he really loved playing football. Yeah. And I, you know, I if 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 you don't love it and you don't want to go through the, you know, the doldrums of the summer the grind yeah like you have to love the grind and that's kind of what you hear to fall in love with the process yeah it's like when you it's cliche and it's stupid but you hear those you know those guys that go and they have great nfl careers you have to fall in love with the little things like and jerry rice like yeah jerry old, it, it, it's like, like you have to fall in love <laughs> with the idea that you're getting something out of that grind or the push uh, of basically beating your body day in and day out during the summer. Seriously, like growing up, that was like the thing. Like Jerry Rice, what? for sure. Like, that's all anybody that's talked all about. You is ever heard how about. he was a ridiculous off-season warrior, and nobody else was like him, and he was way ahead of his time. Like surely Jerry Rice wasn't the first person to ever think, "Oh, I should work out, work out during the off-season." Yeah, like it was like you should see these hills, the that, hills, that <laughs> Jerry hills Rice of Mississippi. Runs up. Yeah, I mean just. But it's like, really, he invented off-season conditioning, Jerry Rice? Like, nobody else was doing that? Like, Walter Payton didn't have any, you know, off-season workout programs back Pretty in the wild. day? I thought it started with the Junction Boys. <laughs> no, that was that was because they weren't in shape. They would come in and just borderline, you know, Try and murder them. them. Yeah. Far from what they're doing these days. <laughs> and that's not in Norman or anywhere else. It's uh, the... The summer, I mean, if you don't... I don't know if any Junction boys are left, but life will be better for them if they are all dead, the way football is now. I'm sure there's a couple of Roy Moore votes down there somewhere. <laughs> Roy Moore votes. <laughs> so, I, I mean, look, and here's the thing. I mean, going back to CeeDee Lamb, like, who, if he's Batman, who is his Robin? What I've found interesting, guys, and, and you know... I'm not, I don't think that you can discount um, what you see in terms of media availability and guys that are put to the forefront with Lincoln on offense. Like, and I'm setting this up by saying, I really get the impression that that Lincoln feels like Grant Calcaterra is going to be a huge part of his offense this year. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's funny Bob, it was in the video that uh, you, that we posted from you uh, talking with R.J. Proctor. He was the second name that came out of R.J. Proctor's mouth as far as guys that like really impress him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I was maybe a little surprised at that, but it was like, okay, maybe maybe I'm it, not that he's not talented, but when I think of playmakers for this offense, I don't know if Grant Calcaterra would have been the second name out of my mouth. But you know what it is? It's. <laughs> Starting from the Texas game last year when he got hurt, you know, going over the middle. Yeah. And then the two times he got tagged at that Texas oh, yeah. Tech game. Well, Murray tried to have him killed oh, during the Big Four Championship game. Poor Grant Calcaterra. He's like, still came he back. He got hung out to dry by Murray on too many occasions. A couple times. Like, it made you wonder, like, is he doing that for Lee Morris? Like, <laughs> to <laughs> trying take to get, him out. Trying to get the guy killed? But, like... You're saying Kyler hated white guys? His season non did not Allen say that. guys. Did not... Don Allen. Don Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Lee Morris could be a white man. Still think he would have contract hit Greg Alcatara. Um, not saying that that happened. Anyway, it is his birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Kyler Murray. Also, you know who else's birthday? Belldozer. Jalen Hurts. Oh, is it? It's the Belldozers, too. Yes, it is. Happy birthday, Dozer. And it's Mike Trout's birthday. It's a big day for birthdays. Yes, it is. August 7th. So, but no, I mean, I, I think Grant Calcaterra is going to... I mean... The fact that also the fact that Lincoln Riley was so adamant that Nick Basquin, you know, work out with the team back in the spring, like I gotta think he thinks Nick Basquin's gonna be a big part of this offense. Bob doesn't I mean, believe me. I go with the feel it's a feel good story that he gets back, but if Trajan Bridges ends up being better by the the conference mm -hmm. part of the schedule, that doesn't surprise me at all. Well we all what we about look, Drake? We did a well Drake 
I'll tell you this. I'm, I know you were telling me yesterday that you've heard some positive like things. Calcaterra and Nick Basquin both think that Drake is ready to burst out. I, he's a good football player. Like I've I've been adamant that he will be a guy that contributes. Whether I don't, you know, I don't think he's going to win a Bolitnikov by any means, but he's going to be a contributor at some point in his career in Norman. He can be a hunter. I think, a, I think he's a really good football player. That's racist, by the way, <laughs> just because he's white. No, I was waiting for. We've had so many potential. Is this racist segments Co- today? High IQ. Does he have high IQ? I coaches kid. Coaches kid. Grinder. I literally suggested that we show up to Josh's house in witch doctor uniforms, and no one questioned whether that was racist or not. Mm, Might have been true. But, but yeah, I mean, no, I mean, but that entire position. I'm sorry, should I said Danny Amendola? Because like you can't I go for Wes Welker. Wes Welker. I mean, it's like I said, Tim Dwight. And you guys told me that was way too old. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, we can't. Plus, Tim Dwight just ran in a straight line. I prefer fast. Dwight Clark as Dwight. opposed to Tim Dwight. Yes. Well, I could see, I could see them riding off on the sunset and horses together. Tim Dwight and Dwight Clark. Yeah, I have no doubt that Dwight Clark has a horse somewhere. Did they both play at Iowa, or did we didn't know Dwight Clark played? Like, Dwight Clark went to Iowa. Did he? Mm-hmm. Tim Dwight. Yeah. Okay. Did he? Mm-hmm. Tim Dwight went to Iowa. Mm-hmm. Probably no Bob Stoops, not Bruce Billa. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean. And the other thing is just, you know, where's Theo going to wind up? You know, Jaden, like, I got to think that those guys are playing from the jump. I don't know how many snaps they'll get. It's going to be up to how much of a leap Charleston Ramos made. If he hasn't made much at all, yeah. then I Theo say, and Jaden are going to be right on his tail yeah. the I, entire way. I thought it was interesting just as far as the way that CD answered that question last night, if there's enough balls on the field. Uh, and, you know, I... I didn't go over and talk to Charleston last night, but you can tell his body has transformed. Yeah. He is yeah. much bigger. He's added weight. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he can translate or carry over that momentum that he had in the Orange Bowl. But he's certainly a guy that, you know, I, I don't think anybody would be surprised if you look up and he's, you know, second in line behind CD this year as far as uh, receptions or yards gained. But I... I don't know. I just, I, I guess maybe have a hard time believing that he could just be the, that takeover receiver, if you will. I think he's a nice complimentary guy. And maybe that's just me well, not believing it. Look at the play he yet. made in the, in the, you know, bowl game last sure. year. That was probably, was that more, was that a better catch or just oh, an unbelievable throw? throw. throw like, I mean, that, far. that's the, that's probably the throw of the, Murray's career. The, the most impressive thing that Rambo did there was he kept running. Like, he yeah. believed that, that he could actually complete that pass. Like, how many people really believed that Kyler Murray w- could throw the ball that far off his front foot running forward? That was ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, I, the questions on offense, I, I think it more, and the last thing I want to touch on before we get out of here is you guys mentioned Creed Humphrey. And I will say this, reminder, we did a roundtable last week. All three of us picked Trajan Bridges as offensive newcomer of the year. So we all believe there's just he's something be about a Bridges just as far as how smooth he is about everything. I just think he takes over that in that uh inside spot. You got Drake, you got Michael Jones, you got Basquin, you got Crawford. I think Bridges He basically becomes the Tua of the slot receivers. He's just like F he's all just, you guys. He's so smooth I'm about everything. Over. Like and and you know what? I think it is probably a little bit because we all three went and saw him and he he tore it up that night. He is great that night. Uh but he, he was just, great in every competition. But I mean, yeah. I, no, mine is based also off the spring. I mean, he was yeah. a guy in the spring that you watch and you're like, okay, that kid but is ready you, to play. Then you look at Theo and it's like, God, this guy's just so physically well put together. And Jaden Hazelwood's still good. I mean, th- I've said it before, but I mean, from a skill position standpoint, this is as good as OU's been in a long time. See, to me, from Theo's, top to bottom. Theo's value is what you always wanted. Um, God, go through the list of tall receivers over the last few years. Dahu Green, yeah. Dallas um, Todd, Jeff Mead, Jeff Dallas Mead. Todd. Uh, like you've you've been like, well, if you have this weapon that can run down the field and make these plays in one on one situations, like, but we know Theo Weese is a magician, you know, in one on one situations. Going down the field, you put the ball up in the air and he has a chance to go get it. Like he usually gets it. Like that he brings that type of value to the offense. And we haven't even talked about the, you know, the riches that they have in that tie it in an H back room, just as far as Braden Willis making the move to H back and the videos up on the board. 
you know, you have a guy in uh, Austin Stogner and what they're going to do with him. Is he going to see the field? Yeah. I mean, they have so many goddamn skill players. It's, it's ridiculous. Just, it's insane. What goes to show you, like, it's just like, I mean, Oklahoma's offense is what Alabama's defense is yeah. in college football. Like, yeah. all the kids, uh, I, like, there was a, the kid from Louisville today, the receiver. What's his name? Armani Winfield. Uh, Armani Winfield. He's 20, like, 22. He's 2022 receiver, and he looks at Oklahoma as the mecca for wide receivers. Which is funny because... It's just like people look at Alabama as the mecca for linebackers. But it's funny because, I mean, Alabama, you look at all the, the linebackers, it's like a list of guys. You look at the the wide receiver list at OU, it's been kind of one guy every year. It's either been... Sterling, DD, uh, then, and then Hollywood, Hollywood, and now CD. Yeah, but it, they those other three guys were never... They were always the middle, the focal point of that offense. It's like, now you can kind of spread it out. I mean, obviously, CD is going to be yeah. the, the headliner, but... They have other guys behind them, I guess. Yeah, but I'm, you know, I mean, even Westbrook had, you know, I mean, Sterling had Westbrook, and then Westbrook had whoever. I mean, yeah, they all they always had a buffer guy, but they never had like a one A one B. I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Un- until Brown and Lamb, yeah, yeah. Sure. Brown and Lamb yeah, are really sure. the first yeah, but, yeah, dynamic duo. DD in 2015, I I didn't trust him to make a big play. Yeah, he was just a guy. I mean, a little bit more than a guy. But Sterling was your guy in 2015. Yeah. And I had to... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. There was no one, no one B there. Yeah, I mean, and that kind of coincided with Dennis Simmons taking over, too. Now you're starting to see the product of the guys that he's bringing in. But just like with Sterling, like, I mean, I remember that Baylor game when they first won, when they went down to Baylor and won mm-hmm. after they won two straight Big 12 championships. Like, the plays he made in that game, like, there's always that one player that someone can make that play that no one else on the team could make. That was Sterling. You know, and then the there was... Catching the end zone, diving yeah, to the yes, pylon. Yep. That was ridiculous. And then, uh, you know, with Westbrook, it was like no one else could get behind the defense like he could get behind mm-hmm. the defense. And then the same was kind of true with Marquise Brown when he got hot the last half of the season, Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Uh, and now it's CD's turn to be that guy that does something that no one else on the team can do. What about the running back position? Just as far as we talked to TJ Pledger last night... Trey Sermon looks like a man shot yeah. out there. Like he is, he's he's. But he's, he's always been. He's always been thick, but yeah. he's he's a skinny thick now. Right. It's like cut. he's he yes, is. He he's is, a lot more cut. He is very cut up, and it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Like, I, is TJ Pledger a guy that gets lost in the mix? Like, I still think he could be yeah, a guy. I, that, I mean, I I see him. You know, I, I I saw him yesterday, and he came out, and he was you know available for interviews. And my first thought was. Should I go over and interview a guy that might get lost in the shuffle this year? But you need three running backs. I mean, oh, you absolutely. Need if them. there's anything that we've learned over the last eight years or ten years in Norman, it's the running back depth chart can take quite the hit. And you look up, all of a sudden you're five weeks in, and it's like, oh God, Brandon Clay's getting carries. Yeah, what you, was it? The Oklahoma State game last year where Kennedy Brooks was out, or no? Or no. There, was, well, there was some game where it was just like T.J. Pledger and. Well, I mean, shit. Somebody. They, two years ago, you have Dimitri Flowers starting at running back. In but, like, it Ames. happens every year. Yeah. Right? Like, you had Rodney and Sutton both go down. Yeah. Like, yeah. for season ending. That's it. So, yeah, you can never have too many. And that's all. Ramondre Stevenson might end up being someone that yeah. we we're not talking about now because we don't know much about him, but that's a guy that feels like a Trey Sermon clone. Yeah. But I, you know, I think with TJ Pledger, we just haven't seen his best. Like we haven't no. seen him figure it out, adjust to the speed of the game and show us who he really is. You've seen bursts, but they've been in yeah. the fourth quarter and it's been, you know, usually blowouts and you don't really, you can't really take a whole lot out of that. And, uh, you know, the success of the running backs is probably going to depend a lot on what they get figured out up front with Bill Beatembo. So, uh, you know, it, it, Bob, just as far as talking with R.J. Proctor yesterday, I thought it was interesting, not just the praise that he had for Bill Beatembo, but I, I don't know, maybe like a, it's a sense of, and I think everybody appreciates Bill, but you don't really know what you have until it's gone kind of thing. It's like, he is the best of the best right now at that position. Yeah, or you don't really know until you get here. Like, yeah. you think you've got some good coaches, I'm sure, you, no disrespect to the guys he worked with at Virginia for years and years, but then when you get here, it's a different animal, and he's really figuring out how Beatembo can bring out the best in him, whether it's at left guard or right guard, is what he sort of alluded to. He basically left. just, yeah, limited yeah. himself to he's going to play guard. Which, which is makes more sense because, you know, the rumor running around last week of him playing tackle, and then when we saw him Monday, 
that didn't look like a guy that could be a tackle. That could be the undersized Cody Ford. And I had people, you know, close to the program that were telling me that, that he would start over Swinson in the in the opener. Like that that's what they thought the direction they thought it was going. Which is funny because I, I think I mentioned it to both of you after we left practice Monday morning was is like he was very underwhelming physically. But I think it also speaks to the level of guys I say, that just Beat and Bo is recruiting right standing now. Standing up to him just by himself interviewing, he was as big as you want an he's offensive a, lineman He's a to big be. kid, yeah. but when you get him in there with the Adrian Ely's and, and Bray Walker and uh, uh, Daryl Simpson and uh, Swaby, uh, Swaby. Swaby. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, these guys are sinners in college basketball, but they weigh 350. You know, I'm exaggerating, but well, you forget that, that Creed Humphrey is oh, he's never had a center like his size either. Yeah. Huge. I mean, it was always like, you know, Ty Darlington was yeah. a guy that had to get bigger. Yeah. Uh Gabe Eichert was a guy that you know was a converted tight end. Like their history was kind of smaller guys that they were have really some intelligent. Massive, massive, massive guys oh. in the offensive line, right? Well, now. here's RJ Proctor yesterday just talking about the talent surrounding him. You, you come in here, you knew, you know, the reputation of this offense. What's it been like to kind of see the talent level in this in this program? Yeah, I mean, they there's a lot of guys to replace, but like I said, I believe that we'll be able to replace them. We have a really solid line. Um, I don't care who left and who's here. We have a solid line, and we're, we're ready to work this season. Big shoes to fill. I know you guys, your heads aren't always, you know, where you can be watch, you know, watching what's going on, but when you watch film and stuff, you see guys like C.D. Lamb out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what what are your thoughts when you see oh, yeah, guys he's like that? Like, <laughs> he's, he's different. Him, Grant, we have so many different <laughs> skill players that are just phenomenal here, and it's crazy. Um, even if, as an old line, we break down, you can expect C.D. to make a catch, a big catch, run 80 yards, and get a touch. Like, it's good to be able to lean on each other in certain times so it's it's it's, it's really fun being in an electric offense like this yeah we uh, didn't have any of that shit at virginia that was loosely translated yes <laughs> so but yeah i mean I, you know he's a graduate you know transfer so you expect him to be very mature he is very mature like it's kind of funny that and that's what you need i mean you you're glad to have somebody like that with when you're so young on it's the a line. it's a very obvious statement but i didn't realize that until last night i was driving back to oklahoma city thinking about it it's like it's kind of diabolical that Riley went out and got a grad transfer and, you know, credit Bill Beatenbo as well, a grad transfer and R.J. Proctor to fill a position that was going to be a, a pretty much a question mark going into the season. And R.J. Proctor still could be a much of a question mark. And mm -hmm. then you go get a guy like Jalen Hurts. It's like they've, instead of relying on freshmen to come in or sophomores or guys that haven't played, they've gone and at Bridge two the gap. very important positions gotten guys that have experience, have played in college football obviously hurts probably a little bit better level than uh proctor but at the same time they're going and getting guys instead of uh just basically throwing it to some redshirt software and here you go well go yeah and, and now it's gonna force marquise hayes tyrese robinson to win the job not just get it because they're still standing they're gonna have to be better than proctor a five-year player grad transfer if they are better then that is incredible news moving forward and that just gives you know it just gives bill Biedenbaugh some somebody to play with and with his lineup too because he he's he loves being able to kind of shift things oh, in I and out and have no doubt that he he'll do that in the you know I, I don't know if they'll do it to an extent as much as they have in the past but uh you know it'll be interesting to see what that rotation looks like once the season starts now, there's been a lot of players that have kind of weighed in on what they think about Spencer Rattler so far in camp. It's been a question, a, a, a big topic, a big question in camp to people. Uh, Lincoln Riley, uh, or, or Lincoln Riley did talk about uh, Spencer Rattler in his day one. He handled it well. Uh, you know, handled it well. Uh, made some made some rookie mistakes, but also made a lot of made a lot of really nice plays too. So thought it was a, a good first start for him. Now, you guys have heard people talk about him, about, you know, dropping it in the bucket and what a strong arm he has and the velocity and all that stuff. Is anyone, you know, intrigued by the possibility of Spencer Rattler potentially overtaking Jalen Hurts as the season goes along? No. Hasn't reached that level of... And I anything the, in your mind? I think the only reason I I haven't gotten there yet is because I just that jump from getting the offense down. If he would have been here during the spring, 
I think it'd be a very entertaining conversation to have right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're probably but right. But I just, being able to pick everything up, and you, you can't replace that experience that Hurts has. And it's probably a little unfair to Mordecai that you just throw him to the side. Because I, I still, I will die on this hill. I think Mordecai's a very able quarterback. Yeah. Is he a guy that is going to go win you a national title or start three or four years like his high school coach told uh, Kersey in The Athletic? Pro- I, I don't know if I'd go that far. But I do think that they have a good option if something were to happen uh, to a Jalen Hurts. Like, Spencer's Rattler, I think, is going to be an incredible quarterback when it's all said and done. Would Obvious. you ever make the change even though you kept winning? No, would I Rattler don't think Would Rattler ever would. just be the guy even though... Would you pull a Saban? Yeah. Mm. That's... That's the question. Do I? I think Lincoln has that in him. Oh, I, I one hundred percent think he has it in him. In fact, I, I, I don't think it would happen. But I just want to be completely blown off the doors if they started him. But well, look, let's let's look at it this way. I mean, like, so to have replaced Jalen in a national championship game that they were losing, like, for for me to think that anyone would replace Jalen would be because. The things that he is just not uh, here. Okay, let me start over. If he got replaced for me, it would have to be this. He is not capable of doing the things that Lincoln Riley needs to have a, a more than capable offense or even a capable offense. Would like it, be, it would be on his shoulders. Like he would be the one faltering. Would it be fair to say if he couldn't do that from day one, he wouldn't start against Houston? Yes. Or if so, Lincoln didn't think he could, right? Like I don't think that I don't think Lincoln would even let it get to that point. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't think he would just start him to start him. I think he's going to play the guy that, you know, obviously gives him the best chance to win. But I don't know. It's, a, it's an inter- it's an interesting conversation. Like I think that everybody, and by no means am I saying that I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to start. I put a lot of money on it, but I don't know. It just Maybe. I just think I don't know what right Lincoln Riley's thinking. But like you said, injury. You know, if he's lost for the season after a couple of games, then I think Spencer Rattler, you're right in the mix of things. I mean, yeah, sure. And I've, more, they give it to Mordecai, and they see how it goes. And if they don't like it, Spencer Rattler's team. And I've always been the guy that too that I think nowadays you do so much in seven on seven. You do so much as far as being prepared from a high school standpoint and the offenses that they run, I think guys are more than more than ready and more than capable to start at a high level. I mean, the, the last two national titles have been won by true freshmen. That's a fact. Yeah, not even red shirt, true freshmen. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably a little unfair. I mean, I think that everybody would agree that Trevor Lawrence is, a, you know, I, I guess, generational talent. As far yeah. as at the quarterback position, but I don't think Tua, be, I don't think two has just reinvented the the wheel. I mean, is that is that like now going to become the blueprint? Like you have to replace your quarterback if you're really serious about winning a championship. Like first Saban did it, then Dabo did it. Does Lincoln have to be like, and then Lincoln would have to do it to somebody that has already been screwed over? Like, oh my god! I mean. It's kind of the game you play, though, isn't it? Did, did Lincoln Riley it bring in Jalen Hurts just to show he's as cutthroat as Nick Saban? That'd be badass if he did. It sucked for Jalen Hurts, but... Maybe that's why he's been hesitant to wear OU gear. Perhaps. He's not sure if that scenario could play itself out. Perhaps. You know what my other favorite uh, non, non-story non storyline is from uh, fall camp? What is it? Ooh, Jalen Hurts is the last guy off the field. Every single day so far. Oh. Jalen Hurts, is, he stayed five minutes after everybody else. Not that big of a deal, folks. Look, you're not... Don't g- read into that. You're not going to... There are... We need to have, like, a football... Um, a, I don't know what you would term it, like a, a old-school football drinking game. Like, everything that old-school football people love that happens, you have to take a drink. Just like uh, we joking about uh, the the typical sayings that fans love to hear, which is uh, it, it came up because of the whole Roy Manning thing. 
like they 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 things that immediately get fans to buy into like a new coaching staff. Like there's a there's a whole board you could make there. Which the D de- I know what the one I came up with was like a little bingo the, card. The put defensive bingo card. The defensive uh, new coach bingo. The phrase was, "We're not going to let them dictate what's going to happen. We're going to dictate to them what's going to happen." That is Rotary Club 101 right there. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I might put that. I might do that today. I might put together a like uh, hashtag Speed D is part of that. That 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 is an old head bingo card. Oh yeah, no doubt. That'd be good. Uh, okay, so fall camp has started. I'm no longer calling it spring camp by mistake. I'm, I'm aware that we're, although it's 100 this damn degrees every day. This is preseason fall camp. It's really summer camp. It is it's, miserable outside. In by the way, you know how I figured out I was officially an old? Is when I went out to practice and I saw Spencer Rattler wearing number seven as a QB. I was like, that's not good. Still got the Rhett Bomar <laughs> Yes, stay. yeah. Stop. And, does, well, and Jordan didn't, Thomas didn't, didn't do well. Jordan Thomas didn't do much to bring it out yeah. either. But Ronnie Perkins has made the, it sexy again. So Marco Murray. But seeing someone throwing a football with the number seven, seven on, it's just a stigma. And you don't guarantee. Fourteen years Spencer later, has it's, no clue. Who oh yeah, <laughs> fourteen years later, he was four. Okay, now I feel old. It's time to go. <laughs> well, when your friend was the quarterback after, you know. You're getting there. Very thankful of you, Rhett Bomar. Very, very <laughs> thankful from the Putnam City North Panthers. <laughs> All right, so we appreciate it. Sorry for the technical difficulties that uh, knocked Josh out. I'm trying to look like, yeah, we still don't have internet. Still nothing. It's Actually, weird. Bob probably cut the line. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm sending the bill to you if that's the case, Bob. Bob had someone crash into a power pole to take down the internet in my phone line so Josh could not be on the podcast today. I don't know. It might have been. Somebody else. I saw a couple. Jenny Carlson. Uh, maybe, maybe Jenny with Sooners triple it, extra coming. I don't think us. it would have been her. I I saw a couple. Saw some Burger King out front. It might have, might have been somebody else. All right, got your shot in, didn't you? All I'm saying is that'd go against probation. I'm done now. All right, uh, that'll do it. We will see you guys again next week with plenty more coming up from uh, fall camp, and maybe we'll have some recruiting news from Josh if the internet is back up by then. Hopefully, If it's not, we're in a lot of trouble at Sooner Scoop. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week right back here on the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.